once again, we have our two cattlemen with us, Bob McCann of right here in Texas and Greg Wood from Iowa. Greg, in a typical year, you can grow plenty of forage up in your country. Uh, tell us what the stocking rate is. Well, we, we try to stay in that two acres to a pair uh, range. It, it, as things go along and we've improved our management a little bit, it's become pretty easy. Some, some years, we, like last year with all the adequate moisture, we could get below that even in that maybe an acre and a half. You got to work at it to get it done, but it's achievable. You bet. And Bob, what are some of the key hurdles that you guys face down here in Texas uh, in terms of your forage production? Well, the the brush encroachment is probably our big deal down here, and certainly coming out of a drought, you know, it's always going to be worse. Uh, but if you if you let it get away from you, you're going to lose a lot of stocking right there. And uh, if you kind of stay on top of it and use some good products and for control, you can really boost your stocking right there. So I want to talk a little bit about those products. What are some of the newer products that you've had some experience with? Well, we've used uh, the Sendero product on Mesquite and had really, really good luck with that. Of course, we, we've used a lot of the uh, weed maintenance products and we uh, graze on next and things. And we see really good residual uh, effect from a lot of these products. And uh, the other benefit we get from using a lot of the Dow products is the technical assistance we get from a lot of the regional uh, people around around the state, so they're a big help to our, our operation. Greg, you shared a few moments ago some of your favorite products. Elaborate a bit. Well, I, you know, we've come to be wholehearted believers in Forefront, and it's the residual of it and the safety of it is it's phenomenal. I mean, we've really made huge gains in the thistle populations in our area. And you're a past regional winner of the Environmental Stewardship Award Program, a program I know you're deeply committed to. Why is your family so committed to improving the land and the resources you've been given? Well, I, th I think as, as an awful lot of people feel, you know, we want to make it a little better than when we got it. And that's been a big goal of ours uh, in achieving to be able to run a few more cattle. You know, we're in the business of forage and raising beef from forage. and. So we believe very deeply that we need to take care of it and make it better than when we got it. Sure. Bob, both as president of NCBA and just as a personal rancher, I know you're very committed to the Environmental Stewardship Award Program. Tell us a bit about that commitment, both from your perspective as well as NCBA's. Sure. I think it's very important that we showcase our environmental stewards uh, at the association. And, you know, it's, it's a, it's a really, really key thing for to, that we're able to get that message out to our consuming public about what all the good things that, that ranchers and, and landowners are doing for the environment out there. And, and uh, these guys, these, these environmental stewards, are they're, they're kind of the poster childs of, of that, that whole scenario. And uh, it's, it's been a great program for us in the past and we will continue with it. I feel that uh, the NCBA ESAP program is the premier program mm -hmm. uh, in the country for mm -hmm. sure. And uh, so I think there's been a lot of good things and there's lots of hopefully be more improvements in the future. I think so. Both of you ranch in different parts of the country with different weather conditions, different weed species, but I can sense that deep commitment to growing grass. And I've heard other people say, you know, we don't grow cattle, we grow grass. So we're grass farmers first. Why is it that successful ranchers are so committed and focused on improving their grass and their forages, Bob? Well, when we get this native country, and we, all of our properties are native range, and uh, when we get it in that really high, good range condition, uh, that's when we get the best benefit, the most production from our livestock. Mm -hmm. And uh, also our wildlife species benefit tremendously, and, we, and it's a very important program uh, for us, our, our recreational hunting program, uh, but also just to take care of the species that are out here on the land. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing to see when you get that range condition up there where, it, where it's supposed to be, how much benefits you get. Greg, what would you tell other people about being a grass farmer? Well, I, I think the same thing. You know, first of all, we need to take care of it and make it better than when we got it. And, and to do that, you know, increases production. Uh, as I said earlier, we're grass farmers. So, you know, we got to get everything that we can. I, I think that as a steward, all of us, we need to get out and tell the people what we're doing and showing and I'm more than happy to have anybody come and look because we try to do it right anyway and, and uh, it just we got to make it better because there aren't getting to be any more acres they're not making more acres in this world that's true absolutely well thank you both for your insights we appreciate it you can learn more about the environmental stewardship award program by visiting the website environmentalstewardship.org 
And to find out more about other topics related to weed control and forage management, another great website is rangeandpasture.com.